Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show we're going to be tackling Egypt's economic file where Egypt is uh, aiming and thriving to uh, have a lot of stability amid the economic challenges taking place nowadays. And joining us here in the studio to shed more light on this economic file is Dr. Ali Masoud, the Professor of Economics at Benny Swift University. Dr. Masoud, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Nir. Ladies and gentlemen, first off, before we start our discussion, let's check out this report regarding uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi actually heading the National Defense Council to review a lot of the uh, domestic and regional issues. And we'll be right back. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi headed a National Defense Council meeting where they discussed the Army's 2016-17 budget as well as a number of pending domestic and regional issues. In the domestic field, the Council discussed the security plan for the country in the next period as well as measures taken by the Cabinet to control the hiking prices of basic goods. Sisi ordered that any illegal attempt to monopolize commodities or increase their prices by merchants be thwarted. The Council also discussed the latest efforts to eradicate terrorism in North Sinai, which escalated three years ago. Meanwhile, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Semah Shukri, discussed the results of the recent Paris Peace Conference to reinitiate Palestinian-Israeli talks. The Council meeting was attended by Parliament Speaker Ali Abdelayel, Prime Minister Sharif Ismail, Defence Minister Sid Isobhi, Army Chief of Staff Mahmoud Hegazi and Foreign Affairs Minister Semah Shukri, as well as the Ministers of Interior and Finance and of the General and Military Intelligence Services. Meanwhile, the agency rating evaluates Egypt's high fiscal deficit, low foreign reserve coverage and recent volatile political history, with low external debt being leveled against gradual progress in implementing an economic and fiscal reform program. Fitch Ratings, a global leader in credit ratings and research, has reaffirmed Egypt's long-term foreign and local currency default rating with a B grade, which signifies a stable economic outlook. The agency rating evaluates Egypt's high fiscal deficit and low foreign reserve coverage and recent volatile political history. It's estimated a budget sector deficit of 11.6% of GDP in the fiscal year 2016-17. This is larger than the 9.8% estimate, which is due to the government's failure to introduce the value-added tax VAT as planned. However, a reduction to 11% of the GDP is still projected. It noted that general government debt increased to an estimated 90.3% of GDP, yet the external debt is relatively low, adding that it expected debt to edge up to 90.5% in the fiscal year 2017. The net external debt is forecast to remain just below 7% of GDP compared with other countries with a B median of 26.3%. This is after it strengthened to 4.2% the previous year. Fitch assumed that growth will strengthen slightly to 3.6% since energy shortages are being addressed and public and private investment is rising. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, starting off our discussion right away. Dr. Masoud, now, President Sisi headed the National Defense Council talking about the uh, state budget for the 2016-2017 uh, uh, fiscal year. Now, for this meeting, what do you think were the main topics uh, on top of the agenda? Well, actually, uh, we have a problem of uh, budget, public budget deficit. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. I can expect this is going to be, uh, or it was uh, the main issue of uh, that discussed uh, during mm -hmm. this meeting. Uh, this issue is, really has to be tackled very well. Uh, the government had a plan, actually, in order to reduce or mitigate the impact of uh, or the size of uh, budget deficit uh, through uh, implementing what we call fat value-added taxes. But it sounds to me that it is not in the process because it needs a lot of institutional capacity to, to, mm -hmm. to implement this in new system. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Maybe I expect next budget year or next fiscal year is going to be uh, in place. Mm -hmm. So the public budget it is one of the main issue that actually or the main challenge that actually we have been facing so long time and this problem escalated actually after 25th of 
January 2011 because all of the wages and salaries increase, increases without actually um, a real increase in the production or mm -hmm. productivity of people who are getting this salary and wages. So uh, this is the main issue. Um, I believe also the president, uh, I assume the president actually uh, talked about it and directed people there to uh, make the government actually uh, spend its uh, expenditures or its money mm -hmm. in an efficient way. This is mm -hmm. one thing that actually we really, we, we really have to do it. And I can see that, uh, for instance, in, in my own university, at Benisov University, I can see all these directions and all this attitude about we really have to rationalize the, the money actually we have in our budget. Mm -hmm. So I can see it in, in my university and I can see it also in other governmental units. So these are the main uh, issue that is going to be discussed. Mm -hmm. But we've been suffering from a budget deficit for a few years now and we've seen a lot of cabinet reshuffles uh, especially for the economic team mm -hmm. and the finance mm -hmm. uh, financial team within the uh, the cabinet that were replaced just to get the economic state and the uh, uh, the state budget on the right track and not to suffer as much mm -hmm. uh, that big of a budget deficit now a few years in, and, and through many uh, different governments and a lot of shifting uh, within the ministers and the ministries, why are we not moving ahead? Why, why are we having a bigger budget deficit? Well, actually, let us make it uh, very clear. Mm -hmm. The budget deficit, actually, the main reason for it uh, um, is the real or the, the real economy in in our economy the real facts of our economy is not that doing good mm -hmm. um, our labor productivity is very low right mm -hmm. um, we consume more than we produce mm -hmm. so to tackle all this problem actually you really need for instance in order to increase the, the government revenues you really have to have a big a huge uh, uh, private sector in a place and to have a huge or big private sector in a place, you really have to work very hard in uh, improving your business environment. Mm -hmm. So all of this, if we really didn't tackle very well uh, the, the business environment in Egypt, we will suffer it for, 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 for a long time as mm -hmm. well. Especially we have a problem of uh, public debt. You are talking about public debt that consuming uh, almost 30% of our budget. If you are talking 30% uh, of our budget is just serving public debt and why we have all this public debt because actually uh, well the government expenditure more than its revenues and if you ask why why this is the case well our tax system now it is much much more efficient than a few years ago mm -hmm. but still the gap is really big so you really have to work in in putting in place the fat, the fat, uh, mm -hmm. the fat, uh, the value added taxes. Mm -hmm. About the main issue that we really have to tackle and work in it, improving the business environment. So we have a huge business of private sector that you can tax this business. Mm -hmm. So you will have you generate you generate revenues for your public. Without doing that, you will we we are going to suffer. It is not about ministers this minister goes and this minister comes it is about the real economy mm -hmm. and when you talk about real economy it is not only about even economics it is connected with education system mm -hmm. it, uh, how much actually knowledge skills that you build in your in, in, in the students at the university, that's once they got in the public or the, in the job market, they, ha they acquired the required skills mm -hmm. for the market. So it is completely uh, connected. It is not so far also from what is going on in the political issues in the region mm -hmm. and all the political and, and, uh, and security issues in the region. If you're talking about we are really encouraging the for foreign direct investment. Mm -hmm. to come and visit in, invest in Egypt and we have huge opportunities but in the current actually in the current regional uh, security issues 
we have to work very hard in order to convince people to invest in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So even in the local issues, we did so much. Uh, look, a few years ago, we really used to have a really critical and serious uh, security challenges in Egypt, all this. What was really uh, going on in Egypt, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was like uh, nominated to be like something yes. like Iraq or Syria or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, somehow, uh, we could get over mm -hmm. it. And now we are much, much better in situation. Yes, we still have all this fighting in Sinai, and we are sure that we are going to win it. It is a matter of time. Mm -hmm. It is completely a matter of time, but we can see what is really going on here. Uh, but in order to put your economy in a track, first you have to uh, put your security issues and you have mm -hmm. to tackle this. And I believe we did very well, very mm -hmm. good. The second issue is that we are doing it now is the economic stability. We are working to tackle the economic issues and mm -hmm. some indicators like uh, inflation and some issues like financial market uh, stability. We did so much in it, but we still have exchange rate problem. The exchange yes. rate problem we have now, uh, it is very hard actually to, uh, to, to bring foreign investors unless they are going to guarantee that they can uh, uh, actually send their, their money they got and, and make at a profit in Egypt to their countries back. Mm -hmm. So all of it is actually connected together. Yes. It's, it's well, talking matter. about the foreign investment, uh, direct foreign investment, which in turn would uh, really help the <laughs> private sector here in Egypt as well, uh, the investment law has been uh, uh, a real problem for many years and yes. it hasn't been resolved and we still keep talking about trying to attract the foreign investor coming to Egypt. Egypt has a lot of uh, opportunities uh, for investments in different fields and different sectors. However, nothing is really being done about the investment law. So when will that be resolved? When will that not be a problem and an obstacle? Because the, the, the foreign investor, he sees a lot of opportunity uh, in Egypt. However, they don't know exactly if they enter the market, they're not, they're not sure how they're going to get out of it if they want to. Well, uh, as I told, uh, or, uh, or, or as I mentioned before a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. that uh, we really have a problem in, in business environment in Egypt. We really should have to tackle and work very hard to, mm -hmm. to, 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 uh, to fix it. Um, otherwise, until now, actually, we need to work very hard to convince Egyptians to invest, mm -hmm. Egyptians themselves to, to invest. Uh, regarding the foreign direct investment, uh, if we don't uh, have really good investment law, which actually um, the government is proposing, uh, is working actually mm -hmm. in the proposing law, but until now, I don't know, I don't know why. Uh, this law uh, has not come uh, mm -hmm. in the reality yet, and it is not sure of yet. Yes. So we really need uh, to work hard in getting this uh, this uh, uh, this law mm -hmm. uh, in a place. And um, it is very important to uh, before actually you bath uh, you bath this law mm -hmm. to have communication with the business uh, with business uh, community. Yes. Because you are giving them incentives to work and and the, the work hard. Uh, there is another issue regarding foreign investments. So why we are talking about foreign investments? Mm -hmm. um, we have lots of money in Egypt that it can be invested. Uh, when we talked about Suez Canal, billions of pounds just came out. Just mm -hmm. in a few days, you get 62 billions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we have a huge, but people prefer and uh, rather actually invest their money in the real estate sector. Mm -hmm. be, be, why? Because they feel it is profitable and it's safe. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if you make the business environment and the, and the doing business or, or the ease of doing business is better, in Egypt you find that people are going to uh, spread in all over the sectors and invest. But still, what is unique about foreign direct investment? Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about foreign direct investment, you are not talking about money only. Mm -hmm. You are not talking about finance only. You are talking about uh, uh, technology transfer. Yes. If you 
look for China and many other Asian countries. Uh, foreign direct investment was the channel that transfer technology from mm -hmm. the Western countries and developed countries to many of Asian countries, I including China itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is, it is one way actually to transfer technology. For, we have technological gap between Egypt and uh, some developed countries. So to close this gap, you have three strategies. One of them, uh, you, have your, you build your own technology which means that you really need to invest so much in the education, in, in R&D and all of that. Mm -hmm. And this is going to take a long time. Yes. It's going to take a long time, but you have to do it. Mm -hmm. But in parallel of that, you need some new technology that is, can be actually get it through foreign direct investment. Yes. Uh, the main challenge we have here, uh, it, not every foreign direct investment is good for Egypt, for mm -hmm. sure. Let us make it clear. Yes. We're not saying mm -hmm. every every foreign direct investment is good for you. No, mm -hmm. uh, I have researched before that. Well, if foreign direct investment go to sectors in industrial sector is going to be having a good impact or a bitter impact and very good impact in economic growth over mm -hmm. the medium and longer term. But if this goes to the natural resource part. Mm -hmm. Mining is not going to have so much impact in economic growth, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So this is how can the government manage the file of foreign direct mm -hmm. investment? Which which kind of foreign direct investment you are going to encourage and and actually direct to your economy? Mm -hmm. And how can you actually prepare the sectors that you really want the foreigners and foreign direct investment to invest in? How can you prepare that yes. for them? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, how, the, how is the contracts is going to be? Um, for instance, many countries said that, well, if a foreign, uh, if a foreign, foreign investors come to invest in this country, he, she, she, he or she has to hire a specific uh, percentage of labor. Well, if you didn't specify, if you didn't specify, uh, they will, can hire only securities mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, cleaning guys and so on. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Masoud, a lot of observers are saying that maybe because uh, Egypt is really embarking on a lot of uh, mega projects, that mm -hmm. it will never, it, it will never uh, really reduce the budget deficit in time because the expenses are so high, and it's going to take a while for uh, for a few a few years at least to start reaping any uh, fruit uh, out of these uh, mega projects. We've seen the expansion of the Suez Canal, the administrative capital, the social housing uh, units uh, in Mu'attam. We've also seen the agricultural uh, mm -hmm. projects. So, so many mega projects. Do you think that with all these big projects it would be impossible to reduce the budget deficit simultaneously? Uh, well, uh, the, the challenge actually, and I believe, uh, if you remember, when uh, President Sisi refused to sign the budget because uh, uh, he believed at the time that uh, the, uh, the budget deficit is, is, is high and he uh, actually back to the mm -hmm. government to reduce it. The issue, if you look to the number he, re he asked the government to reduce it, he reduces the same, the same number <coughs> of last year, which means what? Mm -hmm. it, but at least you just stop it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is big, mm -hmm. but it is not escalated. Like saying, okay, now it is, a st it is, is stable. Uh, yes, um, uh, what we suffer from it now that the, bub the, 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 what we call it, physical space for the government is not good, mm -hmm. not big. And this also, it has connection with the size of wages and salaries in our budget. This mm -hmm. is another issue, actually. Yes. To, the size of uh, subsidies, mm -hmm. which is, is connected to social problems and social aspects, mm -hmm. that is very important that the government has to take care of it. Uh, but I expect the government uh, during the following year is going to do its best in order to not escalate the public mm -hmm. budget deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they cannot solve it for sure. But are these figures realistic? Yeah. Which figures? The figures of the budget deficit that would still remain the same this year as uh, As last a percentage year? of GDP, yeah. 
yeah, it's gonna be realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it is gonna be realistic, but it, it provides also a huge challenge for our government. Mm -hmm. Uh, and poor the Minister of Finance. I, yes. I, I, he's really, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yes, the, the, this guy is doing a little bit of a very good work, uh, but the problem is deep rooted back. Mm -hmm. so it is very deep rooted back uh, that you cannot solve it. If you are talking about subsidy and the subsidy part of the budget, and, and you talk about the wages and the budget plus the, um, uh, plus the, um, the public debt service, you are talking about almost 75% or more than 75, mm -hmm. almost 80% of the, your budget. So you still only have space to move on with the, your projects and mega mm -hmm. projects, only 20% of your budget. Yes. So it's pushing us v very hard, pushing very hard. But uh, uh, as you said, all what we are doing now, we are going to reap all of, uh, of benefits, but it's going to take uh, m maybe not less than four years in order mm -hmm. to. And um, this is a reasonable, uh, a reasonable yes. time. But the more the more the more challenge that I or the high, the bigger challenge or the biggest challenge that our government really face now, how can you really but pause public budget and public debt under control, not escalating more than that? Mm -hmm. Because if if it's getting more than that, you are going to get into the zone of nonsense uh, uh, to be not sustainable. Mm -hmm. If you get into the non-sustainable zone, you will uh, have a very bad impact in the reputation uh, of, of the Egyptian economy or the potential of the Egyptian economy. Mm -hmm. So it is not only about figures, it is also about what message these figure, figures are sending to investors. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now joined over the phone by Ambassador Gamel Bayoumi, the economic expert. Hello, Mr. Ambassador, can you hear us? Hello, yes, good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, now, President Sisi was heading the National Defence Council talking about the state, bu uh, state budget for the 2016-2017 fiscal year. Obviously, the uh, budget deficit is really getting up uh, pretty high and this is not what Egyptians expected after a few years of embarking on a lot of mega projects, taking a lot of uh, financial support and aid from many other countries, uh, striking a lot of uh, government to government agreements with uh, countries such as China, Japan, uh, Russia, uh, Saudi Arabia. What is the future for the uh, state budget and how can we actually control the budget deficit? Uh, God help them anyway, but uh, the, the state budget is a different story from mm -hmm. the di direct investment or trade. Uh, the budget is a matter of spending more than you are getting. Mm -hmm. And of course, the deficit, it's normal anywhere. I don't know, I don't see any government spending less than its revenues. Mm -hmm. This is dangerous even. But here we have a huge which is reaching 9 or 10 percent of the GDP, which is not healthy at all. Mm -hmm. And the first thing the, the president did when he took place, that he refused the first uh, budget because the deficit was huge and the government tried to, to uh, strain the lines uh, in order to have more reasonable budget. We, of course, one source of the budget is the revenues coming from taxes. Mm -hmm. And as the economy is not in its best situation, revenues are getting less. So leave the budget alone. Now we have the problem of the deficit in the supply of foreign currencies. That was normal because we were importing much more than we are exporting. Mm -hmm. But Two elements came and jumped in this arena. One, that those who saw that uh, the dollar is getting higher started to gamble against the Egyptian pound. Another category of people started to save in dollars instead of saving in Egyptian pounds because the, the rate of interest in, uh, on the Egyptian pound does not cover the inflation and does not cover the uh, growth of the uh, value of dollar in the market. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So the, the problem was tripled there. The real demand in the market in Egypt is not really the real one. Mm -hmm. It is one for import, one for uh, gambling. The third was for uh, is for uh, saving a dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, problem now we have to encourage foreign direct investment. And uh, here I agree with your guest that we are giving different uh, messages to the investor. Of course, in general, we are uh, asking investors to come, whether Egyptians living abroad or Arabs or foreigners. Same time, the mass media is not helping us. They are attacking our businessmen, attacking the business community, asking them to pay over their taxes also in order to help the economy. And uh, even there are threats that you are invited to come to invest in Egypt with the condition that you do not make gains. We want an investor who makes losses. A very strange uh, uh, environment there. So as investors, still my money in my pocket, I wouldn't come to a country where I am set by being rich and whenever I reach the uh, position of being rich, then they will confiscate my money. Mm -hmm. Very bad environment and uh, uh, most of our big colonists in Al-Ahram, in Al-Akhbar, are talking this sort of uh, language. Mm -hmm. Another problem that uh, the investment law did not put clear the conditions of getting land. Shall I get the land according to fixed prices? or I shall go in auction, or uh, you are giving me the land uh, to, to use it for 20, 30, 50 years. The law is not clear, and the government cannot take decisions there because the law is not clear there. Mm -hmm. A third and last problem that dispute settlement uh, mechanism. It is not clear, and uh, I am afraid that I know cases where the decision maker cannot take decision, he wants us to go to the court, and you know that the courts will take you years until mm -hmm. the, the people who are in charge of the finance in the banking system cannot take decisions. I owe them 100,000 Egyptian pounds. If I go ready to pay 90,000, they do not agree. Mm -hmm. In normal cases, they agree because going to the courts will consume much more expenditure. Yes. Things like that. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, these things are clear to uh, the presidency level. And I think the solution is not at all uh, coming from economists. Mm -hmm. Economy in this case is much more dangerous to leave it for economists. But economists should give the president and the uh, cabinet different solutions and different options mm -hmm. because the decision and at the end of the day it is a political one mm -hmm. because if you raise the exchange rate it's good if you don't raise it it gives another uh, solution yes. what can you do politically what can you convince the people in order to follow you and to give you the strength this economy. So with all the problems and the challenges uh, to actually attract a foreign investor here in Egypt, it, it's practically safe to say that they have more reasons not to come than to actually come and invest in Egypt. But what about the private sector, uh, the local private sector here in Egypt? Is there a way to encourage and turn the private sector, turn the Egyptian economy into a healthy environment for uh, a private uh, investor, a local businessman, to actually invest uh, in projects here in Egypt? I think the president said it in his last meeting that uh, private sector can come and I, I, I guarantee that they can invest in a safe environment. Also, the, the, the investment coming from governments, from uh, uh, development funds, from the Saudi fund, or the Kuwaiti, the Emirates, and so on, can be guaranteed. But this is a government-to-government -government, uh, operations. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the level of 
the medium investment where yes. we are asking big investors, private sector to come. I think up till now you do not satisfy them that they are coming in a safe place. Mm -hmm. The third dimension, it can be covered by the government because we allocate 200 billion Egyptian pounds to finance small and very small uh, projects in order to encourage uh, young people to have their own business. This is good. But still the bulk, which is the second category, big investors, either coming from abroad for the first time or those who are already in the country, I don't see a lot of encouragement for them up till now. Yes. Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, the economic expert, thank you very much for joining us. Now, Dr. Masoud, you've, you've been saying, uh, stating a lot of reasons why the budget deficit is not really, um, not really showing any signs of hope, really, of getting back or being reduced. Are you saying that, that we will reach a point where we will only have one thing to do, which is uh, lift the subsidies and seem that the only other way is to reduce the wages and the minimum salary because if we actually do that maybe that would help in the big scheme of things for the Egyptian economy however the, the people won't be happy public opinion would go uh, would, 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 would really take a u-turn so is, is this a hopeless situation? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not uh, uh -huh. very dark. It is very difficult, yes, but it is not uh, to the point that it is a hopeless situation. Mm -hmm. uh, well, regarding the subsidy, if, uh, as, I, as uh, I mentioned before, mm -hmm. you talk about almost 75% or almost 80% goes to wages and salaries, mm -hmm. which no way that can be... Uh, reduced. Mm -hmm. You know, the government employees, what, once he reaches a specific, um, a specific salary, it is very hard to reduce it. Definitely. So it's going to be really, you know... Impossible. Imp almost. Almost impossible. Uh, almost impossible. Yes. The second thing, <clears throat> which consumes a huge percentage, which almost 28 percentage of the, our budget, mm -hmm. is uh, debt service, mm -hmm. which uh, we can just reduce it. Yes. The third one, one is subsidy. Mm -hmm. The first thing, why we subsidize some uh, goods and services? To support poor people, right? Mm -hmm. To support needy people. To support people who cannot afford buying this product or getting this service. Yes. Uh, the first question we really want to ask here, do we really put in the place now a system where all this Mm -hmm. subsidies goes to people who deserve it, mm -hmm. which I can say no. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you have a huge bulk in your budget, which it is a very indisperate situation, very, not a good, very good situation, uh, goes to people they don't actually meant to help them. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, you really have to tackle some issues, which is very tough mm -hmm. even to talk about them. Yes. It's very dull. Yes, you talk about subsidy, but by the way, you reduce subsidy uh, on energy. Yes, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. How come you subsidize uh, uh, gasoline 92 and 90? How come mm -hmm. if you have a couple of cars, SUVs or four cars, you are going to benefit from mm -hmm. the, uh, the people who are uh, working in, in the foreign embassies here mm -hmm. using your gasolines actually uh, subsidize gasoline? Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, people who own the factories uh, uh, in the steel manufacturers and so on, uh, very big businessmen, they are not meant to, mm -hmm. to actually subsidize the energy for them. So, in the case, subsidies has to be really rationalized. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, yes, you can subsidize the, uh, the kerosene, which goes to actually people who, who really need it in yes. some, some way. Mm -hmm. So, this is the issues. Another issue we really have to talk about it. How about uh, free education? Mm -hmm. This is a really tough, tough part of it. Uh, to, to what extent we really need uh, the free education? Mm -hmm. Well, you can be, be very 
big rich businessman and mm -hmm. you send your kids to uh, public schools mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, yes uh, they are not getting uh, receiving uh, high quality uh, service and so on and so on um, so uh, a huge issues that we really need to rationalize our and huge issues we really need to make it in public discussion mm -hmm. uh, to what extent do we really need to for instance make education free uh, to the level of high school mm -hmm. or we have to make it for the university university education mm -hmm. should be free is it free for mm -hmm. instance in the united states mm -hmm. but then again we get <laughs> yeah, into yeah, the yeah. Actually, yeah, getting the quality of education exactly, but mm -hmm. y y these issues you really have to to make it clear in front of people, mm -hmm. put it in the table, talk about it, and 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 take some solution. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it is a very tough issues to talk about it, very tough issues to talk mm -hmm. about it. But we really have to put this in on the table, and we really have to to tackle it. So the part of the subsidies. We really have to work it in, 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 and handle it in a very, uh, very good way. Yes. I can see the government is moving in that way mm -hmm. in terms of subsidizing some product, but at the same time, you are increasing the monetary transfer to people, yes. which is actually both, you know, uh, uh, um, fit better. So mm -hmm. if you transfer people who are needing and you give them money, uh, like Karama project, for mm -hmm. instance, it goes to very needy people. Yes. So, but if you subsidize all the product, usually richy people get mm -hmm. access yes, to it. Definitely. Yes, definitely. Check out this report regarding budget deficit rising to 9.2% uh, of the GDP in the first nine months of the fiscal year. And we'll be right back to continue our discussion. Egypt's budget deficit rose to 9.2% of the country's gross domestic product, GDP, during the first nine months of the current fiscal year, compared to 9% during the same period last year. In a monthly report published by the state-run news agency MENA, the finance ministry said the budget deficit recorded £254.9 billion during the period between July 2015 and March 2016, compared to £218.3 billion recorded during the same period last year. Earlier in May, the ministry valued the budget deficit at £223 billion, 7.9% of GDP during the first eight months of the fiscal year, compared to £186 billion during the same period last year. The government expects the deficit for the fiscal year to be between 11 and 11.5% as a percentage of GDP, whilst it aims to reduce it to 9.9% in the upcoming fiscal year. The report said total increased by 3.2% to record £291.1 billion compared to £282.1 billion during the same period of last year. Ministry attributed the increase to an increase in tax revenues by 3.7% to record £212.4 billion. Total expenses increased by 8.7% to reach £533.3 billion during the first nine months of the current fiscal year compared to £490.6 billion during the same period of the previous fiscal year. The government spending on subsidies, grants and social benefits fell by 20.2% to reach £106.4 billion compared with £133.4 billion during the same period last year. Meanwhile, the Central Bank of Egypt rejected a request from the Parliament's Industry Committee to allocate 20 to 25 percent of the monthly surplus to factories for the procurement of raw materials. Foreign cash reserves at the CBE rose to 17.52 billion last month, an increase of 510 million dollars from April. Welcome back, ladies. Gentlemen, continuing our discussion with uh, Dr. Masoud. Uh, doctor, now, one of the topics being discussed uh, in the agenda of the uh, National Defense Council was actually uh, talking about the hiking uh, in prices uh, for a lot of basic commodities, a lot of uh, uh, products here in Egypt. Now, this has been an issue that's been going on for, for quite a while and definitely every year when uh, the holy month of Ramadan starts,
prices do increase and then we hear about the armed forces actually trying to support the Egyptian market having their own uh, products as well at a subsidized uh, price. Talking about uh, trying not to illegally monopolize any sort of market. So this has been a problem for a while and definitely not every time we'll be waiting for the armed forces to actually support mm. the Egyptian economy. We need to find some solutions within the, uh, the local economic uh, life here in Egypt. Why is that not being resolved and why is it a recurrent problem? Well, actually, especially this year, we yes, we have the the main reason, the big, <coughs> the basic reason why we have inflation rate is high, mm -hmm. because our production is still less than what you consume. So yes. we produce less than we consume. So you you have to import from outside, mm -hmm. and the money you have is chasing a few products. Mm -hmm. So you end up by increasing and spikes in, in inflation. But what uh, complicated the problem this year? First, what happens in the exchange rate of dollars? Yes. And the Egyptian pound lost almost from last year until now almost 25% of yes. its value, uh, which means, uh, uh, and most of the products actually we, um, we use in Ramadan, uh, and the common feast is, is uh, imported from outside. Yes. So it's increased also the demand in dollar, mm -hmm. uh, which means that, uh, well, spikes in the price mm -hmm. because when you import a product and your your currency losing its value or some of its value you end up by importing by higher price so you are going to sell it by a higher price in, in the in the market <clears throat> so uh, all the issues also is gonna be go on and go on and go on. Mm -hmm. uh, why because we still produce m less than we consume, we consume more yes. than we produce. So once we are consuming more than we produce, this means, well, few products in the place. And if you import it outside, you have to pay money uh, in, in hard currencies, yes. uh, which you have a problem. If you've last year, last fiscal year, we, we imported uh, 60 billion mm -hmm. dollar, uh, and we exported only uh, 28. Mm -hmm. which means you, you still have $32 billion uh, you have to meet, actually, in, in demand of, of the dollar. So the main issue is our production. Mm -hmm. How can you really produce? Uh, the government is doing something to solve it, mm -hmm. to solve this problem. Uh, for instance, if you took, took the, product, uh, the, the project, of the national project of, uh, of uh, the wheat uh, uh, storage and so mm -hmm. on and so on, the first time we have five billion, five million tons actually of wheat actually uh, delivered to the the government, mm -hmm. um, which means that uh, our import of this specific commodity, which we really need it in Egypt, is gonna be less next year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a part of it. Um, the mega project we are doing now in Egypt, or the government is doing now. By all means, mm -hmm. they are uh, putting the basics for uh, economic uh, blossom in the future. Mm -hmm. So it is not the picture is dark. Now what we are doing, for instance, the infrastructure, what the government is doing is infrastructure. No investment without infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. If you talk about road only, during the last two years, since the President Sisi came in power and, and he has uh, agenda of uh, this uh, infrastructure, uh, you are talking about 6,000 6, kilometers mm -hmm. of road were built in yes. New yes. If you talk about uh, energy issue, mm -hmm. if you talk about electricity, for, uh, what have been done and planned to be done until 2018 of the electricity things, mm -hmm. it is equal to what have been added for the whole history of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So over the four years, you add in, in electricity capacity in a country, what you, add, what yes. you did actually through the... Yes. <laughs> so it is a mm -hmm. huge jump. Well, what is the relation between electricity and, 
and infrastructure. Yes, it, it has, uh, and the economy. It is really helping the mm -hmm. economy direct. Uh, to invest in a place like our Egypt, you have to have roads, good roads, right? Yes. And to have a plant and you invest in a business, manufacture especially, you have energy. Mm -hmm. How come? You cannot build and manufacture uh, in our Egypt and there is no energy source for it. Mm -hmm. So in energy, so we are pushing so hard. Uh, look at the infrastructure. If you look at Suez Canal, this mm -hmm. is just a mating idea. How can you really move all the Suez Canal access to be a developmental area? Uh, mm -hmm. Look about... Um, it is complete and it is actually completed uh, or uh, a very comprehensive uh, procedures to make it uh, a very very blossom uh, yes. uh, access uh, look how in terms of culture you have uh, in terms of connecting sinai with uh, with the, the other part of egypt mm -hmm. you're talking about six tunnels under suez Canal. yes this means what this means the product are good move from uh, from the land, the mainland of Egypt to Sinai, mm -hmm. some product to move from Sinai to the mainland of Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, you are talking about the uh, Sarabium area, uh, the Sarabium project, which yes. is moving the water to to Sinai. You are talking about Ismailia, uh, new Ismailia. You are talking about a new site, which is you are creating, you are moving to. Uh, invest in area that you didn't invest in before yes, so definitely. it is it is a moving in terms of infrastructure mm -hmm. well talking about the productivity and not really producing as much as we are mm -hmm. consuming uh, the government has uh, passed uh, the uh, the tariffs on imported goods uh, earlier on mm -hmm. and that was meant to actually encourage the private industries and the private investors to actually try and uh, produce uh, their own goods because they won't be able to import as much as they used to. Now, that really didn't, that, in a way that backfired because the people didn't, didn't really produce as much as, they, as, as the government hoped for, and yet again, the, the value of uh, the Egyptian pound against the dollar re, uh, went down. Do you feel that maybe this was not the right strategy or is it the right strategy but it will take longer time than expected well i believe the government did that in order to increase the revenues mm -hmm. of the, for the budget but uh, to encourage uh, to encourage actually the local product you have it is not about giving them financial uh, financial support or it is not about raising the tariffs it is about the main issue that why our products are not competitive because we don't have R&D, good mm -hmm. R&D strategy here. Uh, so the level of technology is not that. Yes. Uh, our education system, so the skills actually we have now, it is not competitive with other peoples in mm -hmm. other countries. Uh, so, uh, and the most important thing, well, you, you know what, just fix. Mm -hmm. the, the, the basic three issues and don't give any money support or any yes. tariffs increase. The mm -hmm. first one, you really have to improve the business environment that can improve the education system. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the third thing, improve the judicial system that it, need, it, it, it deals with uh, with the business uh, in age. If you do that, believe me, our local investments don't need you to impose tariffs on foreign products mm -hmm. and they don't need financial support. You just yes. do it. Yes. Just do your part as a government in three issues and let the, gov the, the business people do their part as well. Yes. So, all in all, are you hopeful for the Egyptian economy to actually rebound and really reduce the budget deficit not in such a long time as expected do you feel that we can actually find it within a year at least that we'd actually start booming and the budget deficit would go down well um, I, I don't expect in the short term we mm -hmm. will have our budget deficit will go down but uh, what I'm hoping for is to just stop excel yes. uh, escalating the problem. Yes. So make it just stable. Yes. Okay. Even we have uh, 
our uh, our public debt, for instance, it is more than it is more than 100 percent mm -hmm. of GDP. Still, it is sustainable, given yes. in other issues that related to the Egyptian economy. Mm -hmm. So it is still sustainable. But the problem uh, we really so we are not expecting that in the short term we will you you will put your budget down. Mm -hmm. It's going to take years to, to yes. control this. Especially, you have a very high, you really have to solve this uh, subsidy problem. You mm -hmm. have to increase the productivity in your government, in government employee sectors, and you have uh, to deal with your public debt. Yes. So, the government should really take care of mm -hmm. not having and putting more public debt in Egypt yes. on the Egyptian citizens and Egyptian future generations. Definitely. definitely. Yes. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate. Always the economic file in Egypt is very critical and we're going up and down with a lot of challenges here and there, but definitely the Egyptian economy hopefully will uh, be seeing uh, a lot of uh, happier and sunnier days. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have, but let me thank our very distinguished guest, Dr. Ali Masoud, the Professor of Economics at the Benny Swift University. Dr. Masoud, always a pleasure having you with us. Oh, thank you. Sir. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Nara International. I'm Henny Safe. Thank you for joining us.